Joining us right now is, uh, I mean, a legend. There's no other way to describe this man. He is the legendary NFL draft, senior NFL draft analyst for the worldwide leader in sports, the great Mel Kuyper Jr. here on the Rich Eisen Show. How you been, Mel? Good to see you. Very senior, Rich. Not just senior, very senior. These days. No, 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 no. You, you look. You honestly, you're, you're like, uh, you're, you're like the Paul Rudd of draft nicks. You, you haven't aged a day, man. It's unbelievable. Oh, yeah, right. You haven't. You look exactly the same, Mel. You look awesome. Good to see you. I uh, appreciate it, Rich. You're the best, man. How many drafts is this for you? Now, what, what number is this? Forty six have been associated with. Forty one at ESPN, Rich. Yeah. Forty one. My word. And I just, because I, again, I remember watching you in college, Mel, just blowing it up and, and, and saying things, honestly, but saying things that you believed in your heart and in your gut. And, you know, obviously you were proven correct um, and getting called out and things of that nature. And now here, how, I mean, it, it's kind of crazy now, now that we're in pro days world and we're in the world of, of not spinning it at the combine. And now you, you're seeing some kids not like Marvin Harrison Jr. not working out at the com, at the combine and now in the pro day as well how how have things changed in your evaluation of players it's a lot uh, you have to really sift through a lot of stuff now rich and you have to try to figure out how much you're going to weigh that into the equation pro days being one of those as you just said with quarterbacks i've found over the years pro days don't mean much at all well when i remember peyton manning's pro day i got a call from somebody in the league saying if his name was Peyton Jones, not Peyton Manning, could be a third round draft choice. He's bouncing <laughs> balls, he's the wobbly balls. Yeah, you know, it's clear that Ryan Leaf is the better quarterback. That's from people in the league. So again, uh, best pro day ever, Jamarcus Russell, Zach Wilson. Okay, I'd, I'd team say tell me that when he went to pro days, they already knew what their decision was on quarterbacks. The pro days they had to show up for, but it didn't make a difference in their evaluation. So again, how do you factor all this in? Is what the tough part is. We can all say, well, we like this guy. We don't. You might like players. But when the time comes to make your pick, mm. who do you like better at that position? Who do you like better when you put it all together in the totality at all the positions? So it, when you're in that room and you got to make that call and you only have six, seven, eight draft picks, how many do you make count? And that's not easy. It's easy to sit back and do it. Those 32 teams have a tough job every time the draft rolls around. And then, uh, you know, obviously, uh, if there was a secret sauce, uh, you'd be selling it. Um, but – for 41 years of uh, ESPN coverage and 47 years. Is there a through line to know what a successful quarterback looks like when he's coming out of college? Mel? Absolutely not, Rich. Nobody has figured that out. The NFL has not figured it out. None of us have figured it out. We can be lucky, fortunate, the way things roll once in a while. You make strong comments. You, you always hang your hat on the ones you're right about and want to kind of Forget about the ones you weren't. But at the end of the day, going back to Johnny Unitas, going back to all the quarterbacks along the way up until now, every quarterback. Look at the great ones, the Joe Montanas. Look at Patrick Mahomes passed over uh, You know, early on. You think about where we are right now with quarterbacks, you just don't know. You think you know, but you really don't know. And you're going to keep taking chances. That's the most important position in any sport, in all sports, is quarterback in a National Football League. But there's no formula, tried and true formula for that. A lot of it comes down to just your gut feel. I said that to, to Brian Billick when he was doing a book on quarterbacks. I said, Brian, we can talk about all we want about this quarterback did it because of that. This quarterback, like... But when you put it all together, how about the ones you were wrong about? I've had people say to me, Rich, I'm not making that same mistake I made on that quarterback again. And guess what? The quarterback they say that about turned out to be really good. <laughs> okay? Because they were trying to look at this mistake and think, I'm not going to make it. Well, whatever mistake you thought you made in this evaluation didn't turn out right either. So, again, there's no you know tried and true formula. There's no way to figure it. Just because you were good one year picking a quarterback, you'll be good again. I'll give you a story. Mm -hmm. Kansas City Chiefs tried to trade up to get Paxton Lynch. They were unsuccessful, but they tried. Had they been successful, they wouldn't have had Chris Jones because they traded back there after they didn't get Paxton Lynch and got Chris Jones. And the next year, they drafted Patrick Mahomes. Had they gotten Paxton Lynch, they wouldn't have had Chris Jones or Patrick Mahomes. What would the Kansas City Chiefs have looked like then? Oh. That's the fine line between being great and very average. Well, and you've just caused many sleepless nights for Chiefs fans who have been sleeping like babies for the last two years. That just happened. We Mel. woke them up, right, Rich? <laughs> you woke them up. Mel Kuyper Jr. here on the Rich Eisen Show. Caleb Williams, however, is um, is the top prospect in this draft. Mel? Yes. Yes, he is. In 2022, did it, Rich. That was the year where he was spectacular. He had the O-line. He had Jordan Addison. This year, he didn't have the offensive line. It was bad, okay? And we got a kid here at the Baltimore Ravens. I said, with the Baltimore Ravens. I'm in here in the land of pleasant living, right? With crab cakes and everything. And Andrew Voorhees, injured combine, 
Red-shirted, medical redshirt this year with the injury, now going to be a starting guard for the Ravens more than likely. Not on that line, obviously. That line was not good. No Jordan Addison. To me, you know, you go from the Notre Dame game on, it wasn't the best of Caleb Williams. But 2020-22 and even early in 2023 proved how great he can be. So, again, he's going to be the number one pick overall. The debate's going to be moving forward at two and three and even four and five because there's other quarterbacks that teams may trade up to get. And so going through your mock draft, uh, latest version of it, Mel Kuyper Jr., you have the Washington Commanders choosing Jaden Daniels over Drake May. Why do you feel that way? I feel strongly about that one, Rich. Uh, yeah, Jaden had did everything right. I mean, he did not have that off game. It wasn't a game where he didn't have his best stuff. I bet that with pitchers in Major League Baseball. He had it every week. He did against Alabama two years in a row. He added weight to that frame. He became a guy who could keep his eyes up and he could see the field. He trusted what he saw. He trusted his arm. He trusted his receivers this year. And he did a great job. And he was a dual threat quarterback who was aggressive running. He was aggressive throwing, Rich. And guess what he didn't do? He didn't turn the ball over with interceptions or fumbles. So he was the guy, aggressive, yet being a guy who didn't, shoot his offense in the foot. Bottom line is, Drake May, going into the year, looked like he would challenge Caleb, possibly. That was accurate because he had a really good 2022, but coordinator moved on to Wisconsin. Josh Downs moved on to the Indianapolis Colts, where he had a heck of a rookie year. Didn't have Tez Walker early on, and he was just off. He did. There was three games, Rich, late in the year, where he didn't have his best stuff even close to it. Virginia, NC State, Clemson, even the Miami game, there were some throws he could have made he didn't make. Some of the throws he didn't make, there's no excuse for. So he's got the longer delivery than you would prefer. He's young. I think he needs, like, the Mahomes year, Rich. He needs a year to tweak that delivery, speed it up a little bit, and settle. And he's still young. Uh, he needs some work. Mahomes sat for a year behind Alex Smith, and then he traded Alex Smith. I don't think you want Drake May to start from day one this year. Now, we say that about all these quarterbacks, and they all do, but Drake May you would like to see handled like Patrick Mahomes was in Kansas City. And then there's J.J. McCarthy, 21 years old, lost only one game at Michigan. We all know, obviously, his resume. Where do you think he's the best fit? Yeah, he was the toughest player for me to evaluate by far, Rich. It's, it's a quarterback that I kept saying to people in August, that's the guy we got to really watch, mm -hmm. right? And every game, you know it, you're Michigan, Rich. The offensive line went nine deep. They had two running backs. They had the tight end. They had Roman Wilson. They had a defense. You know, J.J. McCarthy wasn't asked to be the guy every week. He had plenty of guys around him to get it done. Penn State game doesn't throw a pass. We know all about that. But he, in the national title game, he did have to make some plays. With his legs, he kept that – Really, that drive that he kept alive and he got he flipped field position was a key. A couple of throws he made should have been caught. Uh, he made plays when he had to. He's got Josh Allen type competitiveness. Uh, he threw very few interceptions. That's the problem is the, one, the ones he did throw, Rich, as you know, were very memorable. The two in the yes. semifinal game, pick sixes, the one with the, before the half against Maryland, which kind of got Maryland some momentum going the halftime, made that a tight game for a while. Then the three against Bowling Green. Other than that, he didn't throw interceptions. And he's got tremendous athleticism. He's 219 pounds now. We saw him beat defenses with his legs. He doesn't have the great arm, but it's certainly good enough. Uh, J.J. McCarthy is intriguing because we never saw him put a team on his back. But could he go six to the Giants and reset it there and, and let Daniel have the year, but have him as the heir apparent? Could they do that? Could somebody trade up like Minnesota? You know, Denver doesn't have a two, so it'll be tough for them. Uh, J.J. is a tough one uh, to really figure. He's going to go in the top 11. Where he's going to go right now, I have no idea. Where do you think Panix winds up? Where do you think him? You tough one because of the injuries, Rich. The, the injuries at Indiana, uh -huh. the national title game wasn't anywhere close to what he's capable of. He needs to have you know, a pocket, a clean pocket to throw from. When he doesn't, he's off platform, he's not as accurate. We saw that in the national title game. So he needs the right fit, right situation. Probably, I think, more late first if somebody trades in, if they're that's what they do now, tend to do, late first, trade back in, or early to mid-second round. So where Will Levis went last year, which was a steal for the Tennessee Titans, a guy who I thought should have been a top five, top ten pick. So, hmm. again, we'll see on Michael Penix Jr., but it's really the durability, the injuries, and then certainly the last thing we saw wasn't him at his best in that national title game against Michigan. So why do you put Bo Nix to Denver at pick dozen? What do you because like Because of the Sean Payton, the Sean Payton, Drew Brees comp. And I hate comps, Rich, but I, I was you. sitting in the office a couple of weeks ago and I'm thinking, Sean Payton doesn't have a two. He's in a division with Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert. 
He's in a conference with Josh Allen, Lamar Burrow, and all these great quarterbacks. He can't just have Jarrett Stidham. Now Russell Wilson's gone. Jarrett Stidham's the quarterback. He's not going to be able to trade up because he doesn't have a two. Who is the quarterback that most resembles Drew Brees? And I looked at the numbers, hand size, same. Six foot and a half, Drew, six, two Penix. 24 years of age, professional. You know, has all, you talk about accuracy, 77% this year, 72% his first year at Oregon, 2022. He's got tons of starts at Auburn and Oregon. His father, quarterback, coach, he came up in that environment of football since he was born. Uh, you know, he, accurate, like I said, doesn't have the arm, the big-time arm shot to Drew Brees. No, he didn't. That's why he was the first pick in the second round. I think if you're looking for the Sean Payton-type quarterback, it would be Bo Nix. So that's why I did that. Didn't hear it from anybody, Rich. Mm-hmm. It was just putting all the puzzle pieces together. Mel Kuyper Jr. here on the Rich Eisen Show. Let's just, you know, go a little bit more macro here in the few minutes I have left with you and how quickly quarterbacks who are getting drafted first round, second round, are getting, you know, the gate. They're they're getting sent somewhere else. I mean, just take a look at the 2021 Draft class, first round picks. Trevor Lawrence is the only guy still with his team, and now he's being backed up by the guy who was chosen 14 picks later with, you know, Mac Jones. And Justin Fields got sent away essentially because Caleb Williams is sitting right there first overall. I get it. So that's the long wind up for this pitch. Do you think, in the way that we're seeing quarterbacks get sent elsewhere quickly, do you think if the Panthers somehow had the first overall pick. Let's just say Ryan Poles in his one slip up building the Bears. Do you think that he would, if he had left the Panthers with the first overall pick, do you think if the Panthers were first overall right now, they would swap out Bryce Young for Caleb Williams? Mel Kuyper. It's a great question. That's a great question. And guess what? Justin Fields would have been with the Bears, and the Bears would have been happy moving forward with him. Um, history would have been rewritten. There's no question about that. Right. Um, you know, Bryce Young, I don't know how, if you loved him when you drafted him, you wouldn't love him still now based on the fact that he got beat up. And the one question, Rich, was size, right? We never saw a quarterback. We've seen quarterbacks short, Russell Wilson, right? Shorter than you prefer, have great success. But when you're small, I'm talking about small, diminutive quarterback, okay, 5'10", what, 185, 190 when he's playing. That was a manufactured 205, 206, whatever it was. They knew that. He got beat up. His offensive line, Ole block after Ole block. But what did he do, Rich? He beat C.J. Stroud, but that doesn't matter. You know, that doesn't matter. We saw in college, Rodney Pete beat Troy Aikman. Who cares, right? Bottom line is one game. <laughs> but he stayed healthy. He finished a year, and he wasn't injured. OK, so that, I think, spoke volumes of his toughness and they knew his size when he came in. Get him an offensive line, get him some receivers and then let's evaluate Bryce Young. So to answer your question, I think they would have to stick with Bryce Young. I don't know how you cut ties with Bryce Young when you gave him nothing to work with. OK, and now everything's been changed out from a coaching standpoint. So uh, now back to where we are again with Bryce Young. Now, I think Bryce Young, you would you, it would be totally unfair to him. Mm-hmm to cut ties based on a year where he had no help. I know, but it seems to be, you know, an unfair world that we're seeing more and more yeah. when it comes to asking. You know why, these... Rich? Why? You got to hit the grand slam. A single double in this league right now with Mahomes winning all these Super Bowls is not good. Everybody has to cut ties with a guy that they don't see the ability to get to here. If they think you can get to here, but not here. They're cutting ties. And they're trying to hit the, not the, the home run, in some cases, a grand slam. And is that why they decided to, in Chicago, send Fields to Pittsburgh and then give Caleb Williams a shot because they think he's got the ability to go up here and they're doubtful that Fields could, essentially? Is that it? What do GMs and head coaches want, Rich? The guys that they selected. That's what they want. Ryan Poles wasn't the GM, okay? That's the bottom line. Ryan Poles was the director of college scouting in mm-hmm. Kansas City when Patrick Mahomes was drafted, right? So he, we saw you know, comps, talk about similarities to Patrick Mahomes during the career of Caleb Williams. He drafted Patrick. He probably saw some of that. I'm talking about Ryan Poles. That's why we are where we are right now. All right, last one for you, Mel. On draft night, when you're sitting there, your best, your crystal ball at for me, um, how many quarterbacks in a row to start? I think obviously one and two. It's it's it's, it's uh, Caleb and then uh, Jaden. Three is interesting, Rich. I'll tell you, it's going to make or break a couple organizations. I think it's going to be Drake May. It's either going to be Minnesota moving up 
New England moving out, and New England needs a quarterback just as much as Minnesota does. So three, four years from now, we're going to be looking at Minnesota or New England. Somebody's going to be smart. Somebody's going to be not real smart because you, both teams need quarterbacks. What happens at three is the whole pivotal point of the draft. I think May gets in there at three, and then I think somehow J.J.'s up there. I don't know who gets them, and then Bo Nix I have at 12. So I think they're going to come off the board fast and furious. I think the key is going to be New England at three, and Drake May is going to be the key quarterback because there's some mixed opinion on how great he can be. And the guy that you love that you think you'll be singing the hosannas for the team that gets the value pick by getting this kid in the first round who do you think who do you love i think if he keeps if he keeps dropping the way he is way some think and i think he's going to go at 10 but some think he could drop the 15 18 to me it's brock bowers he's a receiving entity he's not a tight end you can move (laughs) him around anywhere you want he's going to be a productive consistent reliable major league weapon for a quarterback and a pass offense in a national football and you have him going to the jets right now huh you got to go I do right now, but hey, they just got Mike Williams after I did that. They have the offensive line, but they have some age there and some injury issues. Do they take an insurance policy with a J.C. Latham from Alabama, who was a right tackle, but feels he has the skill set to be a left tackle? Troy Fautanu, a left tackle with longer arms than Joe Alt, who could kick the guard. Do they want that insurance policy on that O-line, or do they want to take a guy like Bowers? So it's going to be really interesting to see what they do at 10 in terms of the New York Jets. Man, I appreciate the time, Mel. Really do. Um, thanks for thanks for coming on. I look forward to. I don't know where our sets are going to be in Detroit, but I always love waving. We'll find each other, Rich. I tell you what, most fascinating draft I've been associated with in my forty six years of doing this. Really, really, yep. no kidding. Because of the yep. quarterbacks and the other kids that yep. are so good at the skill positions and things like that. All the intrigue about trading up, trading down, which quarterback's the right one, and other positional battles. It's really going to make or break organizations in, in terms of how they are, good or bad, over the next four to six years. All right, Mel. Thanks for joining here. Uh, and you look so happy. I see the Mad Mel on the McAfee show. Mel, have you seen Have you seen the Mad Mel on Pat's I've show? heard about it. I haven't seen it. I, I have not heard. I, I have to talk to Pat. I'll get on there one of these days, and I'll see and get. What do you think? Can you grade it for me, Rich? Uh, I I I have met Mad Mel in person, and uh, for a split second, couldn't tell the difference. Couldn't tell. <laughs> And, he, and he, he's, he, he's you know, age wise. If we check birth certificates, it does appear to be a much younger man. Can't tell the difference. Really? Okay. Couldn't. So, so rivals Caliendo, right? Rivals Fry uh, Caliendo. I, I don't know, man. I, honestly, I, for a split second, I just thought, and then, you know, um, I, I think he's also got the Lou Holtz in him, too, Mel. You know, oh, just okay. be, when you go on there, just be careful. You don't know who's going to be interviewing you, but. Um, you never know. Could be a, could be a twin. Yep. But it, honestly, <laughs> Mad, Mad, Mad Mel's not, is pretty good. It's pretty good. So, <laughs> and it's the ultimate form of flattery, as you know, Mel. You got it, pal. Take care, man. You be well. Great being with you, Rich. You got it. Take it's care, Mel Kuyper Jr., it, the original, the happy Mel. That was great. That was awesome. (laughs) Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.